Oppenheimer. Finally got to see Oppenheimer. Uh, this movie came out at an interesting time. It came out the same opening weekend as Barbie. People dubbed the coin the phrase Barbie Heimer. Saw both films a double feature, and both movies are some of the highest grossing films of 2023, which is really, really cool. Two unrelated films got to do that. I've not seen Barbie yet, but I was more excited to see Oppenheimer of the two, uh, mainly because uh, Christopher Nolan is one of my favorite directors working today. Uh, he has such an amazing, consistent track record of movies. And he's made 12 movies so far in his filmography, and he's not had a single stinker film, which is actually very impressive. You don't really see that in a lot of directors, like even directors of even other directors that I love, you know, Steven Spielberg, he has a couple stinker films, but Christopher Nolan has not had that yet, which I think is really awesome. Uh, this movie, kind of a departure for uh, Christopher Nolan, is this film is a biopic, tells the story of J. Robert Oppenheimer's role in the development of the atomic bomb during World War II. This movie is more of a biopic type film. It's not really a blockbuster compared to some of Nolan's previous works like the Dark Knight trilogy and Inception and Interstellar, among others, this, and Tenet. This one is more so a drama type film. And it, it's cool seeing Nolan go in a different direction, yet still, you still see the filmmaking techniques that make Nolan such a fantastic filmmaker all the same. Um, the movie is three hours long, but yet I did not feel the movie's run time once. I was so engrossed by this story of uh, Oppenheimer, uh, his the race against the clock and developing this atomic bomb. It's set up earlier in the movie that Nazi Germany was also working on an atomic bomb, and so the race is to uh, build this bomb before the Nazis do pretty much and where that ends up falling into play and uh, some of the uh, consequences with that. Uh, the film has a really fascinating character study on the Oppenheimer character because yeah, he's the character we follow, but he's not the most likable protagonist. Uh, we see at the beginning of the film, he's uh, very unstable. He's very neurotic. He's a womanizer. Uh, he has questionable morals. And uh, we, uh, and then throughout the film, uh, he, he gets uh, called into this. But he does have a brilliant mind that led him into creating the atomic bomb, which uh, shaped the world for better or worse. Now, I like that the film does leave you thinking throughout because there's one part of the movie where you see the victory the celebration of getting this thing created, but yet the movie also doesn't shy away from the serious consequences that building an atomic bomb had on the history of mankind. And I like that the movie doesn't really have like any middle neutral ground on that. It's more so, yeah, there's, you see the benefits that that had, but you also see the consequences of it at the same time. And I think, that nuance is what made this such a very compelling, thought-provoking narrative, especially told in the perspective of the Oppenheimer character who was dubbed the father of the atomic bomb. Uh, this movie has an incredible all-star cast. Killian Murphy is someone who I've enjoyed seeing in Christopher Nolan films over the years, ever since he played the Scarecrow in Batman Begins, and he's been in other Nolan films over the the years inception and dunkirk but man it was great seeing him in a leading role in this film he was amazing as oppenheimer like he fully transformed into this character and gave such an emotional performance with so much range and so much weight to it and i really enjoyed that uh i'm not an oscar expert but if I was nominating, if I was nominating performances that I'd seen throughout the year, I'm, I would, I would front run Killian Murphy for best actor in a heartbeat because he was amazing in this movie. Another amazing performance is uh, Robert Downey Jr. 
Uh, Robert Downey Jr. plays this uh, senator character who befriends Oppenheimer, and then they clash throughout the course of the film. Uh, that's all I'll say there without spoilers if you don't know that side of the story. And uh, Robert Downey Jr. is unrecognizable in this film, but yet he still gives a very commanding performance. It was great seeing a different side to him as an actor because he had played Iron Man for so long. And I think he was an Oscar caliber actor too. Uh, I don't remember if he won the, I know he was either nominated or he won the Oscar for playing Charlie Chaplin. I don't remember if he won for that or not, but you watch him in Oppenheimer and you're like, Oh yeah. Like Robert Downey Jr. He is a fantastic actor. I could see him getting Oscar nominated for this movie too. And that's pretty awesome. And actually, the cast in this movie in general is great. You got Emily Blunt in the film. You got Matt Damon. You got Florence Pugh. You got uh, Josh Hartnett, who I haven't seen in a while. It was cool seeing him in, another, in this movie, and he's pretty good. And then there's other actors who just randomly come and go in the film. They don't really have big roles, but they provide great context to the story that even though some of these actors only have like one or two scenes, it's still cool that they're in this movie and these actors serve a purpose. Like Rami Malek randomly shows up and all in Einreich who played on solo in the solo movie. Uh, Dane DeHaan, you got um, David Crumholtz even, who I know best is Bernard in the Santa Claus movies. He has a random appearance and it was cool seeing him in a Christopher Nolan movie. And even Gary Oldman even shows up at one point, and he plays uh, Harry Truman, who was the president during the events of Oppenheimer. And I thought that was really neat to see. It's I like it when Gary Oldman transformed into a historical figure between playing Gary Oldman and Winston Churchill in that Darkest Hour movie. And, yeah, it was cool seeing him there. Um, yeah, I enjoyed Oppenheimer. I don't think this is a personal favorite Christopher Nolan movie even though this was like my most anticipated movie of the year because of the Nolan factor. Uh, I think because the subject matter, the lack of rewatchability does hurt this film and my ranking compared to Nolan's other movies, like some of his blockbusters, I get into a lot more compared to Oppenheimer. Also, he does the nonlinear storytelling in this film, which I like that approach in his movies. He does it in Batman Begins. He does it in uh, the Prestige, he does in Memento. Works great in those movies. I think it gets a little chaotic at times in Oppenheimer because you see old man Oppenheimer recounting stuff and you see Oppenheimer in his youth and Oppenheimer doing other things. He's making discussions with other people. I'm like, oh, does this apply to when he's developing the atomic bomb? Oh, no, this happened after the atomic bomb, but yet these conversations are happening in the middle of him developing the atomic bomb. And it can get a little confusing at times. Uh, the more I thought about it, I'm like, yeah, I see where these events fall into place now, now that I've seen the movie in full. But when I was watching it in theaters, I'm like, um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm confused about the passage of time in this movie. And I think it got a little chaotic at times. And I think that does kind of hurt the film. Uh, I guess another, I guess kind of minor gripe I have with this movie. Um, yeah, the movie, the movie did get an R rating and I feel like it was a cheap R rating because the, like, the only real reason the movie is rated R because you see Florence Pugh naked in one scene. And I'm like, I feel like you could have, done more to justify its R rating than something as cheap as that. Uh, like, this could have been an easy PG-13 easily, but just because you got put, you had Florence few naked in one scene, it's rated R. And I'm like, really? That's kind of a dumb way to enter to the uh, MPAA and maybe get some Oscar votes, because they, they, like, they're like, the R rated movies are usually our best picture wins, but yes, that's like a minor gripe. I have with the film, but the movie itself is still uh, really, really good. Uh, maybe not my favorite uh, Christopher Nolan film, but still a terrific film. 
amazing sound mixing. I got to highlight this story real quick. Uh, so it was publicized that Christopher Nolan recreated the, the atomic explosion with practical effects. And that was the scene I was most excited to see in that movie. And when we get to that scene, I, I was I was honestly taken aback by it. Uh, the way it was executed, scene, it starts off very quiet, and you see the reaction of the different characters seeing the bomb go off. And then after a couple minutes, and there's reflection upon the Oppenheimer character, you hear the full impact of the blast. I remember seeing that. I saw this in theaters, and the seat started rattling. Uh, I was sharing this story to my dad, and he was like, it sounded like you were in a 4D movie. I'm like, it did almost feel like I was in a 4D movie. Uh, the sound mixing in Oppenheimer, terrific stuff. Really uh, excellent score as well by, uh, I think it was Ludwig Gorenson who scored Oppenheimer. And he did a great job. But yeah, this is a great movie. Uh, I love the cast. Uh, really good pacing. The character study is top notch. Uh, very thoughtful throughout. Uh, I wouldn't put this in like top tier Christopher Nolan, but it's still a really good film. Uh, I can see this being a front runner for best picture at the Oscars, honestly. And I wouldn't be surprised if it does. And that's really cool. Uh, I think it's a good movie. Highly recommend it. It's not my favorite movie that's come out in 2023, but it's still a terrific movie in its own right. And at the end of the day, I gave Oppenheimer a four and a half out of five on Letterbox and an 88 out of 100 on my 100 point scale. Uh, I hope Robert Downey Jr. has a chance at an Oscar because he's given so many great performances. Yeah, I can see him getting Oscar nominated for Oppenheimer. He was nominated for Best Actor for Chaplin and nominated for Best Supporting Actor for Tropic Thunder. I forget he got nominated for Tropic Thunder. He was awesome in Tropic Thunder. It's great that he got nominated for a comedy role. and That was an awesome performance in that movie. And then uh, with the writers and actor strike, I just don't know what movies will come out this year. And yeah, that is, that is quite unfortunate. That's like the biggest casualty in my opinion. Uh, with the ongoing strikes, uh, not really what uh, the writers and actors are fighting for, which, yeah, I'm definitely, I do think they need to have a fair pay and they need to ensure that they're not going to be replaced by AI. But to me, the biggest hurt that the strikes have is uh, the, the big cost of it is uh, the stuff that's being delayed because of the strikes, like uh, especially Dune Part 2. I saw the trailer the newest trailer for that when seeing Oppenheimer and it still said coming out this year, but I saw it got delayed the next year because the strikes. I'm like, it's really unfortunate. And depending on how long these strikes are going to last, because right now there's not really any momentum going and resolving this between the studios and the writers and the actors. Uh, it's some uh, depending on where it goes, this some of the consequences, especially as far as movie theaters go, it's probably going to be just as bad as it was during the when COVID hit, when all the movies got delayed. And it's really unfortunate. I hope uh, it gets. I hope it gets resolved at some point. And Jason says maybe they should delay the Oscars. Man, I think they delayed the Emmys because of the strikes, uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if they delay the Oscars depending on how long. Uh, these strikes end up lasting. 